Hello everyone. I was chatting to a friend today about all the positive and negative side effects of this pandemic. And one of the biggest worries for most people around the world is food security. So many people have lost jobs or have reduced income to the extent that they worry where their next nutritious meal is going to come from. I'm going to show you why this shouldn't really be an issue for most people who can just take a walk outside. At the end of the video, I'll show you just how much food can be harvested from just a short half hour walk in my neighborhood and I promise there was no dumpster diving involved. So this pandemic has definitely had some upsides to life. Interestingly, there's been a huge increase in interest in gardens and gardening in general. Plant nurseries have gone from almost closing their doors prior to the pandemic to barely being able to keep up with the growth. Long may that trend last. For me personally, I've loved spending time at home with my family, especially now that I've moved my office into our home. I've also really enjoyed the quietness during lockdown and, and the long walks that have become a feature of our afternoons. But as I've been thinking about the poorest among us and especially on these walks, I've been looking at the vegetation that's growing all around me on verges and, and public places that could literally feed the entire neighborhood. On that subject, you should check out Ron Finley's Gorilla Gardening TED Talk about feeding your neighborhood. I'll have a link to that below. But you'd seriously be blown away by the amount of healthy food you could collect during a, a, a walk around your neighborhood. Overseas, these would be called wild greens and you would probably pay a premium for them in your local trendy restaurant. In South Africa, these wild greens are called imifino or marojo and this actually encompasses quite a few different plants. I was first introduced to Imifino by a talk given at the University of KwaZulu-Natal by a lady known as Magumede, who grew enough in her garden to feed all her neighbors. She was really worried by the loss of the knowledge around Imifino and the choices that most people make to rather pay a premium for store-bought spinach as opposed to the easily grown plants growing all around them. So let's take a look at the most common weeds growing around us. So the three of us, or actually the four of us, including Sammy, are going to go foraging for food on our walk around the neighborhood. We're going to just see how much food we can find in a little short walk. The most common and nutritious weed I see growing around me is a plant known as Utiutu or Amaranthus. The seeds are rich in carbohydrates and proteins and can be ground up to make bread and it produces a lot of seeds. The leaves are a highly nutritious spinach substitute. I read somewhere that the leaves actually have the highest protein content of any vegetable. In comparing the nutritional levels of ordinary spinach and amaranthus, amaranthus was through the roof and was just as tasty. And unlike many other edible greens, the older leaves are just as tasty as the young leaves. Another great weed is Iklava or sow thistle or Soncus oleraceus. Young leaves are a great lettuce substitute. Older leaves can be a little bitter and they're best cooked like spinach. They're rich in vitamins A, B, and C, plus they have copper, phosphorus, potassium, iron, calcium, and magnesium. Everybody knows the annoying blackjack or umklabangula or Biden's Pelosa. Again, pick only the tender young leaves as they get bitter with age. They're packed with iron, iodine, zinc, and they're a good source of vitamins A and vitamin E. Gallant Soldier or Umtralega or Gallansoga parviflora mix the young leaves cooked or raw into food as it's really rich in calcium. They are usually best eaten before they flower. They're an interesting addition to salad because of their hairy leaves. Quite an interesting thing on your tongue. Another plant is Dandelion, also known as Ichlaba lecati or Taraxicum officinale. Dandelion leaves are best eaten raw when they're fresh and young. As they age, the leaves can get increasingly bitter, but blanching them takes away that bitterness. You just dunk them in a pot of boiling water for a minute. You transfer them straight to ice water to stop the cooking process, dry them, and then carry on with your recipe. Dandelion roots are amazing, and they can sometimes reach five meters down into the ground, which makes them great for breaking up the soil and incredibly drought resistant, which is why they're such good weeds. But you don't have to dig 15 feet down to get to the good stuff. You can usually get at least six inches of roots if you pull carefully. They're not very tasty raw, but they can be boiled and eaten or even added to coffee beans like chicory to make your beans go further. To make tea, you need to finely chop the dandelion roots, add the root into a cup with boiling water and, and just steep for two to three minutes. Add honey to take away the bitterness. The tea is great for digestive issues, for gallstones, inflammation, muscle aches, and even bloating. 
they're literally piles of other imifino chickweed uh, stellaria media peppercress or lepidium binariense sorrel which is rumex acetosella uh, wild turnip brassica wrapper then there are just the common garden plants that we all have in our gardens tobachia violacea or wild garlic the whole plant is edible you can use the flowers and salads and as a garnish the leaves can be used like chives and the roots have a very pungent garlic flavor so so use them sparingly but they can be used just like regular garlic they're great for stews and roasts carpobrotus edulis or sour fig the fruits have a sweet and sour juicy center and they're used to make jams chutneys and sauces another plant we probably all have in our gardens and it also grows as a weed is portulaca it's got beautiful flowers but every part of the the plant is nutritious it's a great addition to the garden, but it's also a great addition to your plate. Then there's the fruit growing all around us in the wild. Amatungulu or Carissa by Spinoza. It's often overlooked because of its milky latex, which makes you think of poisonous euphorbia. But the fruit can be eaten off the bush or made into pies or jams or jellies or even sauces. It's really rich in vitamin C, calcium, magnesium and phosphorus. They have a slightly tart taste, a little like cranberry with the texture of a ripe strawberry. The invasive weed Eugenia uniflora or Suriname cherry is native to Brazil, but the fruits, especially the dark red ones, are delicious and they're an excellent source of antioxidants, calcium, phosphorus and iron. The fruit is delicious, eaten fresh and it makes a great jam or a chutney. Keeping them cold in the fridge also really enhances the flavor and they make a good substitute for strawberries or, or strawberry sauce. There are literally hundreds of plants out there that we could be eating. These are just some of the common ones that come to mind. But the problem is that most people are afraid of eating plants out of the garden or growing in the wild because they see it as dangerous. But the truth is, eating at your local fast food outlet can be dangerous too. Most plants are perfectly fine to eat, but the, the rule of thumb is to obviously not eat anything you're not 100% sure of. If you're going to try something new, eat just a little bit of it just to make sure you don't have any adverse reaction to it. Also, there are tons of great resources out there you can check out if you decide to go down this road, and I'll link to them below. And aside from the experience of eating your own foraged food, the nutrition levels are so much higher than most traditionally farmed foods, and really there's no reason for people to battle with malnutrition when these foods are, are growing literally on our doorsteps. So this was our haul from a short walk around our neighborhood. And it's amazing how much you see when you have your eyes open to this possibility. Here's my wild green salad that I made from some of our foraged forbs. So why not see what you can find when you next go for a walk? Let me know in the comments below what you found in your garden or your neighborhood. Please like, subscribe and share the video with anyone you think might be willing to try something new. And I'd love to hear from you and your experiences foraging for Imifino. In the meantime, happy gardening.